30, 1981, Sarah Brady, the wife of White House Press Secretary Jim Brady, was settled in with a favorite soap opera when the network broke in. Word was that some shots had been fired at the President of the United States. This is how the nation remembers that day. Lying on the pavement with a bullet from John Hinckley Jr.'s gun in his brain was Sarah's husband, Jim Brady. Doctors set to work on Brady and President Reagan, who had also taken a bullet. In the confusion that followed, three networks announced Jim Brady's death. Thankfully, those early reports were mistaken. And after a remarkable recovery, Jim and Sarah Brady join us this morning. Jim, it's a pleasure. Thank you very nice much. Nice to have you here, and I mean that, Sarah. Nice, nice to meet to you. Nice to be here. It's been fun talking to you already this morning. Um, President Reagan has kept you on as press secretary, a measure yes, of great has. respect. Hasn't it been? Are you, yes. are, are you enjoying that function? And I try to do my best at it. I bet you do, Jim. You're in the office, what, every Friday? Well, I'm in at least two days a week. That's great. But I don't tell the cats what two days I'm coming in. <laughs> You're going to check. Because they say when the cat's away, the mice will play. Yeah. OK. And the cat just shows up. Yeah, well, that's good. The bear shows up. Aren't you the bear? I am the bear. You are the bear. Um, can you, is it too painful to go back to those early days, Sarah, especially for you? I mean, the panic and the horror must have been pretty tremendous. Huh? I think it was, but like anything else, time has a way of softening all that, just as childbirth, you forget about that. Um, and we now, Jim has done so beautifully that it, that, that seems very, I feel far removed from those days. Except I think people want to hear what it was like. Jim, it's been a long recovery, hasn't it? It's still going on. Yeah, you work hard at it? Yeah, the physical terrorists are on me all the time. Yeah, I'll bet. What do you remember? What's your first, and you never lost consciousness on the way to the hospital, um, but what's your first memory after the surgery? What do you remember when you came out of it and Sarah was there and people were there? That I was alive. Yeah. Do you have any, any bitterness? Oh. That's, that's primarily a negative thing to do, and I try not to do that. I can work up a good head of steam on that, that boy that's over at St. E's, just like that. On John Hinckley Jr. But, but it's negative. It's not going to go anywhere. Um, so why, why just get angry over it? Yeah, but you don't want him out. You don't want him out of prison, right? No. No. It's not. I'm not a, a juror, so it's not up to me to say. In reading the book, Thumbs Up, I was reading about um, your biggest worry was that you wouldn't be able to play with your son, Scott. Uh, he was two years old when this happened? Just two. Had just turned but you do play with him, right? Yes. He likes to climb trees and things I can't do. Yeah. But you are, are you going to share horseback riding together? We do that now. Yeah, that's good. That's great. Um, for Scott, the terror for a two-year-old, uh, did he realize what was going on? I don't think right at that moment, but right, uh, we kept him informed and answered his questions all along. And of course now today he fully understands it. There was some irony. If you hadn't gone to a certain hospital, you probably wouldn't have made it, right? It was a You'd quick... have a ghost on your shoulder. Yeah, no. <laughs> he was within minutes of dying. Yeah. Two or three minutes and uh, if oxygen had not gotten to his brain at that point, he would, all systems would have shut down. You spent nights in the hospital. Yeah. Um, you only just recently got rid of nurses around the clock, right? That's right. Uh, that's got to be such an invasion of privacy. All the things you just don't think about when something horrible like this happens. Yeah, it, that was one of the hardest things for me, was after Jim was home, to have to have round the clock help. Um, and now our evenings are our own. Um, and it's wonderful just to be a family, the three of us alone, and we managed beautifully. Was it ironic that you were with the president on that day, Jim? Yes, it, it was Larry's turn to go out with it. We had an argument about it. 
You had an argument? Yeah? So you might... And I said, Larry, I'll go ahead and go no big thing. Yeah. And I think if I had it to do over, I'd let Larry go. <laughs> yes, I can understand that. Um, what things do you miss that you can't do? I can't run. I can't... I used to be a good dancer. I can't dance very well now. But that's all right. You can get along through life without that, can't you? Yes. But, but he was a have, wonderful dancer. Been. We're talking good. He can still... <laughs> he still teaches... Uh, learn some at PT. They work on dancing. Uh, do they? Yeah, I heard you sway pretty good to the yeah, music. Yeah, huh? you sway great. <laughs> you had a good that's child. That's because I have a good-looking physical terrorist. <laughs> Physical terrorists or therapists? Therapists. Oh, physical terrorists, is that what you call them? And tell who wrote their... Uh... The Marquis de Sade wrote, the, <laughs> wrote their textbook. But without them, without them, you wouldn't be getting around at all, right? Well, that's what they say. <laughs> Cobian says that's, that's not the case, that it's you that does it. Cobian is the Co primary physician throughout all of this, right? The most wonderful neurosurgeon who yeah. saved Jim's life and who's been with us every step of the way. Because Hinckley's gun was loaded with a dev devastator bullet, is that what yeah. it's called? Boy, not to, what is it, one in ten even have a chance of surviving That's that? That's right. And this bullet, when it hit, it went all the way through your brain, didn't it? Yes. Yeah. Went in my brain and then it exploded. Yeah. And left yeah. fragments in my brain. Did you think you were dying? Well, I, I didn't think I was going to win Wimbledon or anything like no, that. I bet, yeah. But look at you now. You must be so proud of yourself. Are you? I try not to succumb to pride. <laughs> what do you succumb to, then? Can I give you a compliment? <laughs> now, you're usually not very modest, so I think maybe well, what's happened to you now? Well, pride is not something that that I've been big on. All right, well, let me phrase it a different way then. Um, do you feel that, uh, that the struggle has been well worth it and you have a lot to contribute to the yes, world? Yes, I do. Okay, that's good. And for you, Sarah, is life normal now? Is it? I think so. It's been so long now since this happened. What The way we're living seems very normal and natural to me. We have Scott's almost nine and he's just a typical little kid of that age and we and you have arguments, and you fight, and Scott yells at his dad, and it sounds like things are pretty normal in your Pretty house. normal, yes. Yes, he, he does yell at his dad. He does. And his dad yells at him. <laughs> that sounds normal to me. All right, Jim, who should win the presidential election in 1988? Who's your choice? Ronald Wilson Reagan. <laughs> <He's still laughs> that's as much yeah. as he's going to say. Yeah. I want you to know that this book, written by Molly Dickinson, do you like the way she wrote this book, Jim? Yes, I do. Yeah, I do too. It's very uh, compassionate. Because we spent a lot of time, I was on the other end of the telephone. And everything that I told every person she interviewed in that book was simply tell all. Uh-huh. And they did. And it's so well and, done. And <laughs> having gone over it now that's out of galley proofs and, and bound like this, they did tell all. They did tell all. They, <laughs> they told did. about your wonderful childhood, and you did have a good childhood, didn't you? Yes, it was a fun childhood. It was fun. Was and I can look back on that. And Centre is the kind of town where you can walk 10 minutes and be out in the country. Isn't that great? I'm from Indianapolis, so I know that part of the world. It's a great part of the world. Is it true your first word was bang? That's what I understand. Jeez. Isn't that ironic? Isn't that ironic? <laughs> Amazing. This book is filled with ironies, and but also it's filled with a courageous comeback. Thumbs up is what it's called. That's right. There you go. That's the first thing Jim did, isn't it, when he came out of yeah. uh, surgery, put his thumbs up? It's very special, and you two are very special people. Whether you like hearing that or not, Jim Brady, I think you should be very proud of yourself. Thank you very I do. much. It's a pleasure meeting you, sir. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. And we decided to give the number of the National Head Injury Foundation. <coughs> Jim and Sarah are here for a luncheon tomorrow, and they do such good work. And you've become the spokesbear? I am, I am their spokesbear. Spokesbear. There's the number. So <laughs> if you have anyone in your family who's had a head injury or needs some help, Jim's certainly an inspiration for all of that. Thanks a lot. And they've come so far in that technology. Haven't they? Which, thank uh, God for that. People used to be thrown in the drunk tank. You know, there's there's something wrong with this person. He's he's taged.
Not or now. whatever. Yeah, now we're having but, some understanding. But now, now they know what to do with a person that's had a head injury. That's great, and I know you'll be such an inspiration for that too, Jim. Thank you, Sarah. Thank, Thank you, you, Jim. Thank you.